Morgan Adams just opened up about her depression and she just made a video with her brother Ryland Adams. And there's a ton that we can learn about overcoming depression and we're gonna talk about everybody's favorite subject, neuroscience. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health, and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And for all of you who didn't get the memo, my book, Rewire Your Anger, is now available as an audiobook narrated by yours truly, so if you would like to get a copy, it's actually bundled with the ebook version. So it's $7.99, just click or tap on the link down below or in the pinned comment if you wanna get it. The ebook version is only about an hour and 20 minutes, so if you drive to work, stuck in traffic, and you're starting to get angry, boom, just switch on some Rewire Your Anger. What's interesting is there's actually quite a bit of uh, information in there about how I overcome road rage. So there's some tips in there if you struggle with road rage too, as well as dealing with your relationships and all that kind of stuff, all right? All right, so yeah, uh, Morgan Adams just released a video and it was her and her brother Ryland uh, making some pizza for the first time. So we're gonna be talking about depression, overcoming depression, because she started out her video by talking about this. So this is what I've learned in my time of studying. So if you go to my channel, you'll notice that the last time that I posted a video was three weeks ago. <laughs> I made a list for valid reasons why. <clears throat> Symptoms can vary from mild to severe and can include feeling sad or having a depressed mood, loss of interest or pleasures in activities once enjoyed, changes in appetite, sleeping too much, loss of energy, feeling worthless or guilty, difficulty thinking, concentrating or making decisions, and symptoms must last for at least three weeks for a diagnosis of depression. <laughs> So, welcome back, yay. So I'm gonna come back to that pretty soon, but I'm gonna talk about how what Morgan's doing in this video with Ryland, there's actually some science behind how this can actually help you overcome depression. But before I move forward, I do wanna to toss in a disclaimer. Like, when I talk about these subjects about neuroscience and you know improving different neurotransmitters like you know dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, and things like that, like if you are struggling with depression, go out, get help, talk to your doctor. Like, this is not always a replacement for medications. Like, I personally take an antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication called Lexapro, all right? Typically, medications are to get you to a baseline so some of these other things work, all right? So I would recommend you talking to your doctor, talking to a psychiatrist, psychologist, whoever it is, and maybe get on some antidepressants if it's something that you're struggling with. Um, I'm not a doctor, that's just the medication that I'm on, but go out, try your own thing. I did do some videos about my experience with medications, not only Lexapro, but Prozac as well, so if you wanna check those out, go find them, all right? But yeah, anyways, let's jump into the neuroscience of depression, how this thing works, all right? So people who are struggling with depression, now, there is typically a chemical imbalance, all right? What science has discovered though, there's not as much of a chemical imbalance as many people think there is, but a lot of people who are struggling with depression are not creating the right uh, neurotransmitters. And this eventually happens, especially if you're isolating a lot, which is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to do. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, which isn't so much science-based, it's more personal experience-based, is what Morgan does in this video with Ryland is they try cooking for the first time. And this is the first tip I wanna give you. Go find a hobby, find a new hobby. Please, for the love of God, please do this. When I first um, got sober six and a half years ago, I was just like depressed as hell. And this is, this is something very common with people who just get sober. Like your brain is not creating dopamine because it was relying on substances for dopamine. Anyways, I was extremely depressed when I got clean. And one of the things I struggled with most of my life is that I didn't even know who I was. One of the reasons, you know, people are so depressed or even anxious is because they don't know who they are. They don't know what they like. They don't know what they don't like, you know, all these other things. So what I started doing, I just started experimenting with everything. I get so many comments where people are like, I don't know what I like to do. I don't know what, what I like to do. Try everything. Like for me, like I just tried doing stuff. I started hanging out with my friends, trying to get into new hobbies. Um, one of my, uh, uh, roommate, he was you know a musician so i went out and found a guitar on craigslist for like 50 bucks had him start teaching me uh to play guitar i didn't really pick it up <laughs> you know so i stopped doing that but then like my grandma was over and she was knitting a beanie i'm like 
I like beanies, maybe I like knitting. So I had her teach me how to knit a beanie, she did that, I started knitting beanies, all right? So like I just found things that I, I like, I was interested in. And knitting, by the way, can be an extremely, extremely relaxing hobby to pick up, all right? One of my friends, Stephanie from the channel It's Crochet O'Clock, she actually did a collab with me a while back about um, studies that show how knitting and crocheting can help reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. So go check that video out when you get a chance. But yeah, you guys, like, especially because my primary demographic is like 18 to like mid 30s, like you're still young. Go try stuff, do new things, see what you like, all right? One of the symptoms of depression is not finding uh, pleasure in things that you used to find pleasure in. Maybe you've grown and there's something new that you need to find that will start making you interested again and making you happy, all right? And some of this, you know, might be like hiking or going outdoors or whatever it is. Find a hobby, please. So, a lot of what I'm gonna be sharing with you is from one of my favorite books about depression and neuroscience, which is called Upward Spiral by Dr. Alex Korb. He specializes in brain and depression type studies. All right, so get this book. I'll link it down in the description below. Get my book too. But anyways, so one of the issues with depression, which also leads to anxiety, is isolation, all right? So Morgan is living by herself. Um, if you didn't see a while back, uh, Ryland and uh, Shane Dawson actually had Morgan move into the other place that they had, all right? So what happens is when you get lonely, and one of the reasons it's called upward spiral is because you can go into a downward spiral, all right? So when you start isolating, like you start getting a bunch of negative thoughts, you start ruminating, and you also can start getting anxiety. I've talked about this in other videos about how based on evolutionary psychology, we are not meant to isolate, all right? But one of the things that your brain starts doing is it starts getting feelings of rejection, okay? This is because of a lot of the stories that our brain creates. Now, one of the issues with rejection is when you feel rejected, it actually triggers the pain centers of your brain. So feeling rejected can actually be painful. So one of the really cool studies that they did was they had people in this experiment play a game, right? It was like a, a computer game where you pass the ball with two other people. Now, what the subjects didn't know was that the two other people were actually just computers, but they told the people that these were real people playing the game with them, right? So what they did was they hooked them all up to scans and stuff like that because they wanted to see what the brain would do. So everybody's passing the ball, passing the ball, passing the ball, but then the two computer players just start passing the ball back and forth, all right? So then the, the subject started feeling rejection which then triggered pain centers of the brain. Isn't that crazy? So rejection can actually be painful, all right? Now, what the goal is with part of overcoming depression is to spark up neurotransmitters such as endorphins. Endorphins are a natural pain reliever, all right? They also can help um, increase feelings of pleasure. So they've done a bunch of other studies. One of them was with an ice bucket. And this is why it's so important that Ryland and Morgan are doing this baking uh, together, cooking a pizza together, all right? As humans, we are meant to be connected with others. Some of you have heard me say, like, if you're isolating, stop doing it. Even if you're just going to a coffee shop and reading a book, go do that. You will start to feel better naturally, all right? But anyways, with this ice bucket experiment that they did, they had people put their hand in a bucket of ice, all right, and leave it in there. Obviously, you know, after you keep your hand in a bucket of ice, it's gonna start hurting. But what they found was, is that when you put a, a friend or family member next to them, why they had their hand in a bucket of ice, the pain actually started to reduce in the person, all right? Not only did they see the pain centers of the brain start to show less activity, but people also self-reported less pain. Here's the crazy thing. Y'all ready for the crazy thing? Not only did it work when a friend or a family member was right next to them, it worked when they put a complete stranger next to them as well. So think about that. So when I'm telling you to go out and just be around people and quit isolating so damn much, it's because it will actually start to make you feel better. All of my subscribers out there who struggle with things like chronic pain, quit isolating, all right? 
find a support group, hang out with friends, hang out with family members, all right? This starts to make you feel better. You start to feel more connected. So as I was watching this video of Ryland and Morgan Adams and seeing them have fun, having a good time, like it seemed like that was legitimate happiness coming from Morgan because she has been isolating so long. So doing this activity with Ryland was actually helping her out. Now, now I wanted to do most of this video about the good things that Morgan was doing, hanging out with Ryland and all that, but I'm gonna show some tough love to Morgan as well as Ryland Adams, maybe Shane Dawson if he sees this too. But one of the things I'll suggest, knowing this information, I get a lot of people who ask me, I have a friend with depression, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? Hang out with them, all right? There are so many benefits to just having people around you, all right? Having people check in on you. There are so many benefits to that. I know it can be difficult for, you know, dealing with somebody who's struggling with depression because they can start to, you know, sometimes you'll start to feel down too because maybe they don't wanna go out or maybe this or maybe that, right? I used to have to have my friends physically drag me out with them. I'd be like, no, I'm just gonna sit home. Uh, and they're like, no, dude, you're coming with us. You see what I mean? So be that person for your friend, okay? There are so many benefits to having that type of support. If this is a friend, if this is a family member, hang out with them, have conversations, talk to them on the phone, send them a text, see how they're doing. Now, when it comes to Morgan, Morgan Adams specifically, all right? I had some issue with the beginning of this video because she was reading off the symptoms of depression on her phone and she's like, yep, that's me. Never self-diagnose, people, never self-diagnose. Even when you're watching my videos, never, ever, ever, ever self-diagnose. It is the worst thing that you could do. I've had some people comment and say, you know, what if you don't have the resources to get help? Ugh. All right, like what I'll say is, is like the best thing you could do is identify with symptoms. I would say don't diagnose yourself, but if you could identify with symptoms of depression like Morgan Adams was doing, all right, start working on things. That's what my videos are for. My videos are more for providing, you know, useful tips, whether they're science-based or personal experience-based that can help you start uh, managing certain symptoms. But you're not Morgan Adams, all right? Morgan Adams makes bank, all right? Even though she's not making that many videos, that girl makes some money. There is absolutely no reason in hell that this girl should not be seeing a professional to get diagnosed and get the help that she needs, all right? So although like there are all these tips I'll give you and everything, like like something that I've noticed in some videos is that, you know, it it's it's very like, it's very brutal when you see people who don't have the resources, like I just said. So somebody like Morgan Adams, like whenever I talk about these big YouTubers, they need to be talking about going to therapy. One of the few YouTubers who I saw mention that was Liza Koshy, all right? So if Morgan Adams was my friend, and this is the tough love for Ryland and Shane as well, like if Morgan was my friend, I'd be like, girl, Go see a doctor, go book a therapist appointment, go book a, an appointment with a psychologist. You have money, go do it. You know what I mean? So this can be very beneficial. If you're watching this, same thing for you. Go to your doctor, talk to your doctor. Maybe they can recommend a therapist for you. If you have insurance, talk to your insurance provider. See um, who they can recommend in your network. Uh, if you have friends who are in therapy, talk to them. See who they recommend for therapy, all right? Um, I just made a video about BetterHelp Online Therapy and it is a service that I use. My therapist is legit. Um, BetterHelp also helps support the channel. So I have an affiliate link down below. Basically what that means is you sign up for some inexpensive therapy. Not only do you get therapy, but it also helps out the channel. All right, so if that's an option that you wanna use, click or tap on the link down below, all right? But I always say, I don't care how you get help, just go get help, all right? So if you have insurance, take advantage of that. Go get you some help, all right? But anyways, let me know down in the comments below. Are you somebody who isolates? Are you somebody who gets anxious? Maybe you're socially anxious. And my next book is going to be Rewire Your Anxiety. So I will be asking you questions. So make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram because I'm gonna be doing polls and asking you questions about different topics that you want me to cover in Rewire Your Anxiety. So follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And don't forget, we have our first ever monthly group call this Thursday, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you would like to become a patron, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.